This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's 5823, show number 489. Well, Nick, uh, we got Apple earnings uh, last Friday. And uh, what was uh, what was the big picture there? Yeah, Apple reacted pretty well to the earnings announcement. Um, so the stock was up. It closed on Thursday at around 165. It ended on Friday at around 170, I believe 173. Today, we're trading down a little bit. But the one thing I'll say, the numbers look pretty good across the board, but this is kind of like a safe haven play. Um, everybody's still, you know, basically putting all their chips into Apple. But one thing I'll tell you, Kerry, the chart has been making lower highs. So if somebody wants to go back and they look at a chart, you'll notice that in um, January of 2022, the stock was trading, I believe, as high as 183. Then it made a lower high in March of 2022 at around 179, uh, 180. Then if you go to August of 2022, we made a high at 176. Now here, we're not even breaking out to new highs in this name. It's actually, if the stock were to top out today, it would make its fourth lower high. And lower highs in my world are not positive. So um, I, I think traders, even though the stock's in an uptrend, it's above all its major moving averages. When you're making lower highs, that has me on the fence, and that has me looking at this thing and saying, something is wrong here. This is not really what should be happening. So I just want to put that out there to all the listeners. Uh, be very, very careful, especially if you're in love with Apple, because this stock is making lower highs, and, and that's not a sign of strength. It's showing weakness for sure. So today, the major indices trading slightly lower. Yeah, so we have the Dow down about 100 points right now. But the bigger story, in my opinion, is is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ today is down four-tenths of 1%, which is a 50-point decline. It's not a big drop there. But um, again, the NASDAQ has been the best performer this year. So you always want to take a look at the leaders. And you know, we're seeing you know tech, in my opinion, I think is very, very top-heavy here. And full disclosure, I am short the NASDAQ. So if anybody, you know, I don't want anybody to think I'm just talking my book because I, I am short the NASDAQ via the PSQ. So I own PSQ, which is a short ETF for shorting NASDAQ 100. But I am seeing weakness there. And even today, I just don't think there's anything that great. I know the mega cap earnings have come in now. Um, they're all done. And, you know, now we'll get back to reality. And um, honestly, I think technology, which has had a great run in 2023, is very vulnerable here. Okay, so we got upcoming CPI report, and uh, on Thursday we get—that's on Wednesday, Thursday—we get the PPI, and uh, all uh, all parties are waiting with bated breath, huh? Well, these these two reports, especially CPI, it's been a market mover, so you never know it can be a market mover again. The last couple of CPI reports that we've had, though, have been kind of you know, non-events. So this one could be somewhat important. I know everybody's, you know, watching that as the inflation gauge, um, you know, is inflation going back down? But we know inflation's not getting to the Fed's supposed 2% target anytime soon. That would take years if it even ever happens again. So um, in my opinion, these are some pretty important reports. And like you said, CPI on Wednesday, PPI on Thursday, and they've both been market movers. So we'll have to stay tuned and see if they really shake things up once again. Right. And then we got the uh, House Speaker meeting with uh, whoever is running the show in the White House <laughs> um, to talk about the deficit, obviously, and the debt ceiling. They're going to uh, come to an arrangement of some sort. Yeah. You, you know, they should change the name to instead of debt ceiling to debt raising because mm -hmm. they've, there's never been a debt ceiling that hasn't been raised. I think it's 104 times it's been raised so th there's no like surprises here for anybody it's just a matter of you know who gets what and what deal that they cut so uh we'll see how that plays out and then you have janet yellen basically you know uh, out there warning of economic chaos if the debt ceiling is not raised so 
You know, it's the same dog and pony show that we've been seeing for years and years and years. Um, obviously, you know, if, if the conservatives put up a stand and, and said, hey, we're not, you know, going along with this charade anymore, then there would be problems. But I just don't think that's going to happen. I think ultimately, you know, it'll come down to the final minutes and then they'll they'll raise the debt ceiling. Yeah, it's really a charade. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, because nobody's going to not raise it. And that's a technical thing. It requires nothing really other than just checking off the box. That's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, the debt ceiling, like I said, was has been raised 104 times. I was quite shocked to see it, uh, to see that number. But, um, you know, what's 105? <laughs> oh, hey, it's just a debt that we owe to ourselves. So we can always pay ourselves, put it from one pocket into the other, right? And it won't. That's it. Maybe just just print a little more money. <laughs> and, and it's a global, worldwide phenomena, right? That's that's it. In a nutshell, that's basically the story. Right. It's just the U.S. is the leader, the Pied Piper of all these uh, lemmings going off the cliff. Eventually, we know that's going to happen, right? We know it's going to happen. And, you know, that's why we've seen the moves in precious metals, you know, in the past year. It's telling us that's going to happen. And we're getting close if we haven't already crossed the Rubicon to crossing it. And right. again, you know, no, not one of these politicians talk about the $32 trillion in debt uh, that we have. And that's with a T, trillion. You know, put that in the, in the, in the uh, uh, reserve banking system, leveraged by nine, and, you know, you got a lot more there. So quite remarkable that nobody cares about the debt. Hey, so bank stocks rallied last week. I want to go over why, uh, why the money supply is crashing. Yeah, that's a tough call because, you know, right now you have supposedly quantitative tightening going on to, to the tune of $95 billion a month, right? The Fed has not stopped that. Um, we're seeing so many distortions in so many other places. Um, and we don't really know much about the Fed's program with the Federal Reserve program with the other central banks, right? We know that they made some kind of a deal to provide liquidity for each other. So that seems to be working and supporting the financials. We saw that late last week. You saw a very, very good move up in a lot of these bank stocks to save the markets. Because honestly, last week, if you looked at the stock market, um, we had a pretty good three-day sell-off. And the markets were really starting to tumble. Then obviously on Friday, we got a big, big rally on the back of some banking relief. So I can't really speak to that stuff, Kerry, to, when I, uh, to be honest. I, I really just use charts. And I just go by where, the, where I'm seeing real technical issues. But um, the KRE got defended last Friday. Today, not doing so hot, but um, nothing terrible. So I guess that can help these markets a little bit um, at the moment. But the reality of it is um, we've seen some real, real damage done in this regional bank area and also in the big banks, too. Outside of J.P. Morgan, you know, Bank of America is not looking so hot right now. Wells Fargo is not looking so hot right now. Citigroup is not looking so hot. So it's not, you know, if this con if this contagion starts to spill over to the large uh, money center banks, there's a lot of problems that can occur and much bigger problems at that. But right now, you know, they're trying to get these regional banks uh, somewhat under control because these banks now have to all cut their dividends, right? I saw a couple dividend cuts today, and that's going to continue going forward. But I don't think the dividend cut is going to do anything. I think, you know, there's real issues here if there's one cockroach in the in, uh, in the room there's there's probably a million in the wall so you know um again we only have four thousand regional banks well let's see what happens here but I, I don't think this is over no i'm inclined to agree with you uh, the worst is probably yet to come and eventually probably going to envelop the entire banking system globally not just here in the u.s i'm sure the Similar things are taking place all over the world, just not getting the attention that the regionals are getting here in the U.S. Yeah, it's a great point. But we've already seen what happened with Credit Suisse. So, you know, they had to get bought out or took, taken over or taken under, I should say, uh, by UBS. So, you know, once you start hearing a, of some bigger banks like Credit Suisse, you, you, Credit Suisse is a huge bank. And once you start to hear more stories like that, then the fear will kick in. And that could be really problematic. Remember, the, the whole system is built on confidence. You start to lose confidence, then you have some real problems out here. And 
<laughs> yeah, that's so true, man. Watching it, uh, it just and then don't forget Deutsche Bank that got a bailout and. And that's just what was on the surface. But I have a feeling there's a lot more going on behind the scenes that we don't know anything about. Yeah. And I, I watch that stock every day. And, you know, that stock made a high back in, well, a high, I shouldn't say the high, but it made somewhat of a high back in uh, February of 2022. Then it made a, a big lower high in um, January of 2023. And now the stock is really stuck in the mud. It's at $10.65. So, Again, traders got to keep Deutsche Bank on the radar because if that one starts to fail in Europe, that's going to set off some real dominoes. Remember, the European banking system is a disaster. The bond market is a disaster. They went negative as far as yields go. So, you know, there there's some real problems there. It, it's a much uh, it's a much worse scenario than the U.S. banking system, which uh, is a disaster too. <laughs> yeah. Banking in general, you know, banking. <laughs> Bank is the root of bankrupt, right? That's it, the root. <laughs> Just like uh, con is the root of confidence. And you can't have a banking system without a con. No, and you know, those those prefixes, they they come out, they come up and bite you every so often, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost like clockwork. Okay, so but and in the meantime, gold's snapping back today. The spot's up uh, close to seven bucks. Silver down a couple pennies, but uh, but if uh, that was the the raid, the Friday raid, it really didn't do much of anything, did it? No, it didn't. And and you know, gold and silver both came back on Friday, and a lot of people don't realize they didn't go positive or finish at the highs of the day, but they seem to have those morning sell offs, and then they are buying opportunities where they just come back. If they don't go down very far. So, you know, you have to take notice of that pattern. And I'm seeing gold hold, hold up very well today. And gold is the new fear indicator. It's the new VIX is what I've been calling it. And um, right now, the pattern on gold, when you look at a daily chart, is really just sideways consolidation. It's not a breakdown. Hey, it's it's really the old VIX. Uh, before there was a VIX, there was gold, right? <laughs> that's right. Uh, everything, that's right. Uh, everything old is new again, that's saying, right? That, that's right. That's right. You know, another thing, Kerry, real quick, is that we're finding out more and more that central banks are loading up on gold. I was just yes. read this morning that um, in Singapore, the central bank there is loading up on gold. Uh, China has been loading up on gold. Russian central bank has been loading up on gold. I mean, the, the central banks are loading up on gold. And, um, you know, a, a, again, why are they doing this if they're in a, the money printing business? I couldn't agree with you more. It's obvious what's going on here, and uh, but it's just kind of entertaining that uh, you know the the train has left the station and nobody even noticed it. Nobody even noticed it at all, and um, you know nothing goes up in a straight line. But uh, you know, as I've been telling my members, I said you know gold gets to that fifteen hundred handle. You, this is this is it. This is the chance to really, you know, load it up. This this isn't going to go any lower. And I think that, you know, right now, uh, the way gold is holding up and performing, it is giving us a big picture of things to come. And um, I, I would pay attention to it. And the same goes for silver. I uh, couldn't could not agree with you more. And it just seems very very obvious what's happening, except to the uh, geniuses out there who we're supposed to trust our uh, our lives to, right? That's it. And, um, you know, the the, 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 uh, the other thing, the other point I want to make right now is that, you know, all of these people out there telling you that gold is a useless relic, it's, uh, you know, it, it's nothing more than for jewel, jewelry. Um, it's been the, the source of money from the beginning of time. You could go back and, and, and read the Bible, um, go back and look at the, what the Old Testament or the Torah says about gold. And it's going to be, I believe, the currency till the end of time, too. And uh, the way things are heading, uh, I would definitely not disagree with you. And, uh, well, hey, finally, Bitcoin, uh, you know, it hit that 30,000 mark and just could not uh, could not keep going. It ran out of steam, didn't it? Yeah, Bitcoin is um, today is, is taking it on the chin, obviously. You know, there's some news out today um, that... Uh, 
Bitcoin exchange Binance briefly halted withdrawals due to too much volume and congestion. Um, there always seems to be something when it comes to this crypto exchanges. The popular, you know, this 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 crypto exchange um, Bit, Binance is is kind of like one of the last men standing, right? We've had so many of them fail and go bankrupt. So um, again, I, I don't think they want this one to uh, to fade out anytime soon. But you know, not good price action today for Bitcoin. I've been hoping for one more nominal surge up to to short this thing. Um, but today, you know, you're down four percent as we speak. So Pretty decent uh, drop for Bitcoin today. All right. Well, that is it for today. Make sure you go over to Nick's site, InTheMoneyStocks.com. See how he's beaten the averages for decades. Twitter feeds, at ITMS, at NickSantiago01, at Kerry Lutz. Your emails are welcome, KL at KerryLutz.com. We'll get to some comments, hopefully uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And we'll see you on Wednesday, Nick. And, Sounds good. Uh, We'll see what happens then. Sounds good, Kerry. Thank you.